this one has frightened me since I bought it. Can you guess what that red can is? Brewed in Texas. I can read that. It is Carbock. <laughs> so this can is Carbock Hella Chile Spicy Surface. Oh, shit. I've had one chili beer, and it actually had a chili at the bottom of the bottle. And it's one of those rare occasions where I left the, the remaining five beers at somebody's house, and they stayed there. No one drank them, sons of bitches. And that was in Nacogdoches, Texas, which is a college town. They might still be in that fridge. <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps. Because <laughs> I, I tried getting other beer drinkers to drink them, and they just wouldn't have any of it. You ever tried those, um, now I've not tried a lot in the spicy cervezas, but have you ever tried those little styrofoam, you know, it comes like a styrofoam cup and spicy cerveza seasoning of some oh, sort. Oh, you, know, uh, you pour it like the powder the, um, in, you pour the beer in. The beer mixed with the, with the chili and stuff yeah, like that. it's like this infusion the chili powder, stuff, yeah. yeah. I know a lot of people that like them. <laughs> what are they called? Budweiser does one of those. What are they called? I can't. For whatever reason, I can't uh, place them right now. Don't get me lying, but I've tried some of those. I actually liked, I, I, I grilled some chicken one time, and I, I bought a couple of those. And I, just I bet that would be good. seasoning cooking. from it and just cooked with it. Ah, <laughs> really? Uh, rather than put it in a beer. And it was actually pretty tasty. Well, but, you could probably mix it in the beer and use the beer for the uh, marinade. That's yeah, awesome. yeah, if you if you had, a, you know, eight hours to, to marinate. But, yeah, fair enough. Uh, but, yeah, straight seasoning is what I did at the time. But, uh. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's one of those things where I'm excited, but I'm also like frightened. It's like it's like a good horror movie. We'll find out. So, Carbuck Bruco has this to say: the spice of life. Chile means cerveza and hella. I'm not. I'm. I'm gonna let you read it because that, that that sounds strangely worded to me. Chela means cerveza, and hella means a lot. <laughs> oh, okay. And in this case, it adds up to a whole lot of taste. A hella chela is a Tex-Mex mashup of citrus, spice, uh, citrus, and sprite. You got me reading. Citrus <laughs> That's and spice gave it to you. <laughs> that brings the heat <laughs> at brunch. L uh, brunch, lunch, or whenever you... Your what the hell, man? I can't hardly see this. <laughs> Spilling it. Whenever your brunch gets together, enjoy your. Yeah, man, that no hablo espanol. The rest yeah, of it's yeah, in yeah. Spanish. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, I made a mess. All right. So you can smell it. Holy do fuck! It, you can do smell it. Do a smell test. I would highly recommend not rubbing your eyes right now. Yeah, that, that's what I'm getting. Bro, that's some straight paprika right there that I'm smelling. What are you... Pretty close. Watered down... It's like a hot and spicy yeast. Infection. Let's just get this out of the way. <laughs> I'm not. I'm only going to pour that much. Except for you, I'm going to pour it all the way to the top. Uh, oh. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Jackass, and this is Hella Chile. What are you getting on the nose? Paprika. Fucking really hot paprika, too. So, I actually anticipated this. I guess it's because we equate colors with hot and cold or whatever, but um, I anticipated this to be much more red than a gold. Oh, no. So, I see this being very deceiving for, you know, somebody walking in like, hey, look at this beer. They pick it up thinking they're getting a... Uh, getting a Budweiser or a Corona. Some, something like that. And, and they, they don't smell it. They yeah. just, like, grab it and pull it and throw it back. And then they're just... What did I just do to myself? I see this being the uh, catalyst to a lot of tears. A catalyst to a lot of fights. <laughs> <laughs> that, too. All right. So, on the nose, we're getting... I'm getting paprika. I wonder what kind of chili that is. It's not like a... I'm thinking a hatch green chili kind of thing. I'm not sure. It might be like a chili chili. Like the... I'm not... Sadly, I'm not super familiar with... And peppers? Well, yeah. <laughs> I like some of them. I don't like to drink them. I will them say, though, that the scent of it is making me a bit hungry. <laughs> right. It's more like a food that I would want to eat than a beer, typically speaking, but... 
Yeah. So it is appetizing. It is appetizing. Right. Yeah. So that's that's good. We got that going for us. I would say that this would actually probably be really good to cook with. Like, I bet this would go great with some chicken. You know, I was actually going to say that. Maybe like... Um, chicken do like fajitas? A, do like a, maybe add a add a little bit of salt to it and make you a brine for a chicken. Uh, marinate that, you know, inject your chicken with that and marinate it overnight. Uh, throw that into like an air fryer or a fryer if you have it. And I bet that would go hardcore. I bet it would. Throw some paprika in the batter. Future episode, we're gonna we're gonna <laughs> Mike's cooking blog. <laughs> There's too many of those. Binging with Babish has the market co- covered right now. I'm ready, bro. All right, let's we may want to just go ahead and get it out of the way. I don't think it's gonna be like so spicy it kills you, but I think it's gonna be uncomfortable. Let's go for it. All the way. Not for me. So though I could cook it with it, I will give it that. This for is sure, definitely something I could cook with. Yeah, that would not, be, that not would, something I'm going to drink at the bar. I'll leave it here, and you can make some chicken for the family. <laughs> yeah, um, I bet this would be great for people who like um, the spicy Bloody Marys, chili powder. It's yeah, it's got to be. Seeing any kind of ingredients. No, it's not going to tell you what all it's made with. No. I was hoping to get at least the basics. 5% uh, alcohol by volume, 13 IBU, but... Yeah. If you're a fan of Spicy Bloody Marys, I think you would enjoy it. Or if you like those um, those uh, Bud Lights that are mixed with the uh, tomato sauce, what are they called? Whatever that, whatever they're called. If you like the Bud Lights that are mixed with tomato sauce and uh, oyster juice, this would probably be something you would enjoy a lot. If you're not a fan of that, I gotta try that again. Sorry, it's actually surprisingly better than. Although, it, like I said, it made me hungry, so I'm more like thinking about it. Maybe you're thinking about food now. Yeah, I'll try thinking about food. My next recipe that I'm gonna try with was just called uh, Hello Chili. Hello, Chella. Hello, Chella. Hello, Chella. Hello, Chella. Yeah. Yeah, whatever. It reminds me of Helter Skelter for some reason. <laughs> Helter Skelter. All right. It's kind of got a um, aftertaste. That's crazy. It's got a lot of aftertaste. Ugh. Definitely not for me. And I like spicy stuff. It's just I don't like drinking spicy stuff. I've only had um, spicy Bloody Marys once, and I'm, it's something I don't ever plan to embark on again mm. for multiple reasons. Like it might be tolerable going down, but if you drink too many of them, it comes back. It, it, I, it's the worst thing ever. I did give you credit for bringing up a, um, a what was it? Uh, the drink you just said. Oh, Bloody Mary. Yeah. Bloody Mary. Thank you. Sorry, I don't drink a lot of. Them. Uh, but it definitely does have that vibe about it. You oh, yeah. Know, a bloody nose. Oh, it's because it's really vegetal because of the chili. And if you're a Bloody Mary drinker, you're drinking it because the vegetal is what's covering up yeah. the vodka. Yeah. So I'll give it that. Very good beer to cook with. And yeah, that's, I that's would say that it's going to be good for Bloody Mary drinkers and people who drink whatever that beer that we can't remember the name of. That Bud Light. Yeah. Something. Yeah. But yeah, it's... I have a feeling this is going to affect the taste of our next two beers. We should probably uh, wash our mouths out with something. Mm. You want to put a pause on it? Let's, we can take a, let's take a break. Right back. All right, everybody. We need to uh, fix our palates. We had a lot of paprika in this last beer. We're moving forward. This one, can you take a guess what it is? No. Okay. I didn't think so. Pittsburgh Steelers. <laughs> <laughs> this one's going to be a live work Hefeweizen, if I'm saying that correctly. I have not had this beer. I don't believe I've had any products by Live Oak. This one's by yeah, I don't, Golden Road. This clear. was my first one by Golden Road as well. Uh, I can't say I've done any research on Live Oak as well. And they've got a little bit to say on the can. Extraordinary lagers and ales, 
Craft Brewery in Austin, Texas, another Texas beer. And that's really all there is to say about it. Made in the shade. Made in the shade. Alright. Sounds, sounds like how somebody gets pregnant. That's where babies come from. <laughs> it looks pretty. That's a good looking half of Ison. Head disappears very quickly. It's got a very light head. Yeah, you're extremely right. The, the um, bubble formations are not, uh, or I guess they're they're rather thick uh, as far as individual bubbles. I don't know what the term is, is for that. But, you know. The carbonation, I guess. Very clear, golden. Looks like a half. I'm ready for the nose. It smells, smells like a half. It smells lovely. Are you a fan of half? Uh, yeah, actually. Uh, I like half of ice. Okay. Make some good beers. Or make for some good you beers. Get, you get a lot of you get a lot of good weedy floral notes on there. I'd say wild berries of some kind. What are you thinking? Perhaps. 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 I'm sorry. Get off the cake theme. That was I should have done that with the first beer. <laughs> um, <laughs> um anyways, uh yeah. Um, it's got a little bit of sweetness to it. Like it's got some kind of extra sweetness. I can, I can definitely, definitely smell the sweetness. Um, I don't know, man. It just I, I'm I'm a little bit disappointed personally about how fast the head went away. Uh, um, but on the other end of that, you I, know. I think that's pretty normal for a half. But normally, depending on what you're getting, like the flavor profile is not really good. I'm I'm excited. From the nose, I think this is going to be a really good half of half of bison. Fair enough. Let's go. Mm. Very sweet. It's got a uh, aromatic kind of flavor to it. Herbal, herbal, uh, herbal. A lot of baking spice. I'd say some clove. Definitely clove. I'm glad. I'm glad you bring that up. Um, Yeah, yeah, I don't know if that's in this or not, but um, no, that's coming from the grains. I'm assuming, I mean, it could be. I don't work, I don't work for Live Oak, so <laughs> I don't know all of their secrets. Bavarian style wheat ale, which, yeah, there, bro, yeah, heaven wants. <laughs> I would say this is... I do like it. And I'm going to reach over here and get my whiskey and coke out and, of the shot. And the lovely pink cup. Yes, my lovely pink cup. Been some whiskey behind the scenes here. This is a fantastic... Okay, I, I don't want to call it fantastic because that's going to undermine other good Hefeweizens. But this is what I expected it to be. And it's relatively affordable as well. I think I got this in... Uh, Make your own six pack. Which oh, yeah? in my mind is anything that I can make if I can make ten different beers and something, I'm, it's gonna be affordable probably. Yeah, our local uh, grocery store is um, noted for that in our area. We have a couple that do that, luckily. Does H E B do that? Both of the Berkshires and the Kroger and Hack. Okay. Right. Some other places do make your own flights and stuff like that. It's a really good way to sample more beers and try different stuff. It costs you about a dollar more, so, uh, but you are getting craft beers. So in all reality, in fact, I have seen cases where if you bought the six pack outside of that, it would cost more and then those individual beers would be available in their variety pack or go in and, and choose. And, and if, you, can, if you pick get all six, six of those yeah. and you put them in the variety pack thing, it's like a dollar or two cheaper. I did that with the um, Goose Island, not Alyssa, it was the, um, it starts with an M, I can't remember the name, uh, Matilda, I think is the name, the Matilda. Goose Island Matilda. 
it was a twelve dollar six pack mm -hmm. and it was ten bucks for the make your own six pack and the Matilda was in that son of a bitch. <laughs> so I just walked in there, threw some Matildas in there. And I Goose Island for some reason isn't readily available around here anymore. But if I can get my hands on some Goose Island, I'm definitely I would love to do some reviews on them. Aly Alyssa and Matilda are both fantastic beers. Yeah, I like their and their honkers though. And their what is it, three one two? I think is the other one. Um, it's really good as well. They just they just a good brewery, in my opinion. This video not sponsored by Goose Island. Or any of these other beers, mind you. All of the tasting notes have been objective as of thus far. We are at the end. And I wish we'd have actually finished out with more of a bang. But this is going to be another good one to talk about for people who are trying to get into craft brews. Because this is the Shiner Strawberry Blonde. It's very light. It's very palatable. The strawberries are not overwhelming. I guess that might be debatable to some people. But... I consider it a Blondale over a fruit beer, where this one, it's it's kind of difficult to really say. But this one is a good way to segue into craft beers, in my personal opinion. Casey is not a fan. No, man, you start adding fruits in and start losing me. It, it starts making things difficult. I understand. But let's try, let's pretend that we've never had this before. Even, Fair though, even though both of us had. Strawberries erupt from the glass the moment I poured it, smelling from all over the place. It's like opening Mama's jar of Kool Aid. <laughs> yes. Yeah, you can just smell it across the. <laughs> Whenever someone, whenever one of one of your siblings makes a fresh batch of strawberry Kool Aid, and, and you're not low on sugar, no, no, absolutely Definitely not. No head, just it instantly disappeared. It, it does have a yeah that that is notable. The head is completely gone. It it actually has a like a if you're a, a wine connoisseur, maybe this is something you would you would value moving into a beer to kind of keep it a little bit familiar for you. Um, a Ziffendale type um, smell to it. Is it. I don't think I've ever been Boone's Farm. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Boone's Farm. That's not a wine connoisseur. No, That's a no, wino. No, 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 I, was, I, was, I, was, I was relating more. Being so polite. <laughs> That's that's somebody laying on the side of the street singing fucking uh, the song from Jaws. The stories I could tell of my sixteen year old self with Boone's Farm. Oh, <laughs> fucking not as bad as uh, MD. No, MD's no. MD's hangover in a bottle. Yeah, that's good. It's, it's very. Um, it actually says it in bright red here on the top, seasonal, um, and it's very much that. It's going to be best for the hot hot days, which in Texas is most of them, regardless of Yeah, the it's 360 days a year you can drink this. 300. Except in 2021, you can drink it 359 days a year. Right, the five days of winter, <laughs> the snowpocalypse. <laughs> you really just get a lot of strawberries on the head. I, you can get some of the wheat, but you do get predominantly strawberries. The wheat is is relatively muted. And I feel like you can get more from the pull. So let's go ahead and give it the pull and see if I'm right. So you see what I'm saying? The strawberries come in up front. A little bit tart, a little bit sweet. But then you do get a good bit of an actual like... A little bit of wheat from the blonde, mm -hmm. I think. It is a watery finish. The mouth feel is nothing super overly special but for someone who's acclimated to drinking Bud Light, Budweiser, this would be a good way to get started into craft beers or in particular Shiner products if that's something you're familiar with or something readily available in your area. Obviously if you're in Texas it's something that's probably everywhere. 
I'm still going to stick to my original statement in this is a, I would consider this a hybrid beer um, in terms of between wine, well, white wine, and Zippendales and that type of stuff to your entry level um, craft brewing or craft brewing. Mm-hmm. And, um, and, and just that it, it's beer. It's also strawberry wine. Strawberry wine. Oh, now we're oh, now, now, now we're we'll, taking down. I will strawberry beer. That's what this is. It is definitely strawberry beer. Believe it or not, the strawberry sky is more strawberry than that too. Yeah. Like I can't even really tolerate the strawberry sky. It's decent, but I, it's too much for me. I don't think I've had it. It's it's made from one of the breweries in Colorado. I can't remember the name of it. When it, it says was, strawberry, I tend to run away. I'll bring it on the show and I'll make sure you try it. Fair enough. But nonetheless, I would I would recommend this one. What would you say? How would you rate these beers? Like arrange these in the way you think you'd like them. All right. Well, well from is... from I will definitely have again to I can live without it. All right. Before I get all serious, cheers to strawberry beer wine. I already drank it. So I guess I could drink it out of the bottle. I can do that. Okay. So my rating and what we have here today. Yeah, go ahead and re-rank it. Um, we're gonna go. I'm gonna kind of order them left to right. I'm gonna say that I, as a beer connoisseur, I actually like this one. So I'm an uh, IPA connoisseur. I'm gonna rate them. Uh, let's see. That's gonna be your yeah, whatever side to whatever side. Here to better to worst. That way to that way. That way to that way. So. Um, yeah, I'm going to go with the Founders Centennial IPA, uh, the Ingenious Hop Wing. Um, after that, I will have to give it up to this beer. Wow, the really? The Golden Road Mango Cart. I'm going to put that there. Of course, Shiner here. We're going to move that all the way down here, <laughs> just above the strawberry. Oh, wow. And we will put Hefeweizen in there. Uh, moving in next, and this is saying something, putting it right in the middle because I'm not a Porter fan. I expected I'm you to go put the Hef way before the Porter. I expected anchor. the Hef to go before the Shiner. And we're going to slide everything down wow. and say what we started with is my last. That being said, man, I think we've got it covered. Is there anything you want to add? Cheers. Cheers. What's the last one we're going to drink tonight? I got dibs on the Porter. I got dibs on the centennial. On the one you've been drinking. <laughs> I'm just kidding. All right, everyone. Be safe tonight. This is to be in. I don't know. This is to good times. Good times. <laughs>